My name is Sean Doak and I'm a juvenile justice uh, probation officer. And years ago, I boxed at the University of Nevada, Reno. And at that time, I discovered how beneficial boxing was to just total development, physical, emotional, spiritual. At the time, I was working at Rite of Passage promoting boxing uh, idealisms, such as conditioning and discipline. And I decided to take those principles and use them to work with at-risk youth youth who uh, have issues in the community with education and finding a job, who may have some uh, issues with the family. And in programming, uh, I found that through athletics, education, vocational training, that youth are able to make positive turns in their life. I started with the uh, Division of Juvenile Justice Services uh, two years ago, working at Spring Mountain Youth Camp. And at the time, they had a program they were running called the BEST program, Body Efficiency Strength Training, and using boxing techniques and concepts to help engage youth and to get them to work out, to uh, display sportsmanship, and some of the other positive socialized behaviors that youth need uh, in community in order to make it in school or at a job. The boxing program started as a result of needing more program elements at camp. Uh, we had a number of youth who were interested in conditioning, in learning new skills. And so we decided to go ahead and use boxing conditioning skills to get kids out of the dorms and into programming that would promote conditioning, promote discipline, and have youth work with staff to help them uh, progress in boxing conditioning. The program uh, became very successful. A lot of youth initially, they want to come into the program thinking they're going to learn how to fight better. Uh, but the end result is that they learn how to work together, that they learn that boxing is not about fighting as much as it is, it is about being disciplined and dedicated and getting out and working out, doing well in school, providing community service and being good uh, sports partners to each other. I met Armin and Bo uh, while well, they were running the city athletic program. I knew about their program. I knew what Armin was wanting to do in the community and he had a willingness to want to work with at-risk kids, to be able to train them, uh, allow them free membership, and work with them in conjunction with what we were doing in the Spring Mountain program. Armin uh, would be a part of our program. He would come up to camp. He would uh, help the kids learn how to wrap their hands, how to throw punches, how to move in the ring, and so we added that as an extra element of the program. So as kids initially came into the program and became exposed to conditioning, they knew that if they stayed with the program, that they would have their shot with Armin. Once the kids went through that in the program, they also knew that when they graduated, they would be able to go down to the city and become members of the city athletic conditioning team. Our men graciously uh, allowed the kids to come in, no charge, provided uh, conditioning for them through trained coaches, provided also uh, a means of equipment for them, the wraps and the gloves and the headgear, and encouraged kids to show up uh, every day or three times a week. My name is Bo Van Dam, and uh, I'm a boxer. Got my pro debut coming up soon. So, uh, and also one of the owners of this gym, City Athletic Boxing, alongside with my father here. My name is Armin Van Dam. Uh, also, um, I'm getting the guys ready, special this guy ready, uh, for his pro debut that he has coming up. And, and Bo has an amazing story uh, to tell. Before he started boxing, he was on, on the football team in high school. Bo was 285 pounds. Me not realizing that he was a, he was a linebacker, Oh, it was a defensive tackle, oh, lineman. Def yeah, lineman, defensive tackle. 
So the coaches, they want him big. And he was 285 pounds, 17 years old. And at some point, Bo said, Dad, teach me how to box. Because I don't like the way the coaches treat me and the football team. I have a lot of injuries. I just don't like it. I want to start boxing. Bo started boxing in about a year and a half. He lost over 100 pounds. Yeah, not over. even. It took me about 11 months. Yeah. 11 months. Lost over 100 pounds. So automatically, when we went up to the Spring Mountain Youth Camp, we had the same feeling for the kids up there as we had for ourselves because Bo went through, the, through something that was just horrendous, you know? So. And not only that, I saw a lot of the kids in myself because when I was younger, before I started boxing, I was in a really bad, depressed state in my life and I was just a real screw up kid in school. I had a 1.8 GPA. I was drinking, partying, you know, doing drugs every single day of my life just to kind of distract myself from what was going on in my life and kind of try and hide that pain. And so I saw a lot of myself in some of the kids that I met up there at the camp and actually getting to know them and talking to them, we actually shared a lot of similar experiences growing up and going through school and having to find out things the hard way. And so I really care about these kids and I can really, really feel, you know, really feel what they're going through in their head. And, and a lot of times we, we don't get the right guidance. And, and when these kids are up there, they change. They, they change tremendously. But as soon as they get released, there's no change out there. The parents stay the same, if they have parents. Uh, friends stay the same. Nobody changes except that one person that is up in the Spring Mountain Youth Camp. So what is there for them when they get out? Of course, the friends are still there, the parents are still there, but other than that, they have no other outlet. So we figure once they get released, they get a free membership from us, come into the gym, get to know different people, get to know yourself more than any, anything else and, and who you are and what you do and the mistakes that you make in life. Uh, what happened is um, Jesse Vargas was sparring up at the Spring Mountain Youth Camp. And, but when we were up there, we didn't know anything about anything. Um, Jesse Vargas was sparring. We had uh, flyers with us in the car and when we saw all the kids, we thought, hey, let's invite them to the gym after they get released. Uh, from their um, in, in incarceration and then uh, so we left our cards we asked permission to leave the cards there uh, you know because they are in, in uh, incarcerated so uh, we left the cards there and then two weeks later we got a call from one of the officers up there and they asked us if they could work out at our gym uh, during their incarceration so, and uh, we agreed upon that, and then uh, they brought them to our gym twice a week, on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So, and then, and then about three weeks later, we got another call. This was um, from another officer that was running a different program. Uh, it's called the ERC, the Evening Reporting Center. And that program uh, gets kids that are not incarcerated, but they uh, committed something bad enough to be for them on probation. And those, those kids are right, right here right now training. They come in on Monday and Wednesdays. Uh, so now we started these programs and then uh, we, we, we expanded on those programs. We had a kid coming in, uh, was Stephen Carson. Yeah. That was our first prodigy. Stephen Carson was one of a hundred kids at the Spring Mountain program. He came into the program uh, with court orders that he needed to fulfill in order to graduate from the program. He found that the best program, the boxing program, was something that he wanted to become involved with. Once he started the program, he started attending the daily practices. He started putting out the effort that was necessary for him to graduate. He met Armin and Bo and started participating in the city athletic program. As a result, when Stephen graduated, he continued with his amateur boxing career and conditioning at Armin's gym. 
and as a result learned to be one of the trainers where he was starting to make a salary uh, as a trainer. Today Stephen has graduated uh, into real estate now. He continues to be a trainer and also a realtor and is doing quite well. Yeah, I'm a trainer. I actually do uh, cardio classes and I teach boxing as well. So it's cool because I get to meet a lot of different people, uh, share my story like I am now. Just cool because I get, I get a lot of interactions and I'm making money. I just passed my real estate licensing exam. Yeah, and I just signed with my broker and right now I'm going through the whole education slash training process to get everything rolling, to get the ball moving. Earlier, I started coming here once I was released from the youth camp, and um, I seen Bo in there, and I looked up to him because I seen him always training, always fighting, and I seen him fight, and I, wa I wanted to fight. That was my goal when I came down. I wanted to fight, and I seen him doing that. I looked up to him, and now he's become like a big brother to me. His success has been incredibly motivating, not only his success, but seeing him struggle through that because we were training partners pretty much for a while in the beginning. We were running all the time together, training all the time, getting ready for our fights. He worked my corner during my fights and, and I was working his corner during his fights. So it was like a cool little, you know, it, it was like family, you know, and it still is. It was just a real cool experience getting to know each other and, and seeing each other go through the struggle of training and, you know, combining that with everyday life and work and seeing how we could handle that and motivate each other to push through and reach the level that we wanted to reach. And obviously Steven has, you know, gone beyond, gone beyond that. And it's amazing for me to see. Boxing has changed my life in so many different aspects. It's made me, almost it, it molded me to who I am today. Because inside, I've always had the abilities, I feel like, to push myself to the limit, to go that extra mile when you're tired or when something gets hard. Boxing is what took that out of me. And with boxing, it made me have a different aspect on everything in my life. If I want something, I can get it. Boxing, you want to fight, you want to train, you want to beat the other person, you have to train harder. You have to be the one that's up in the morning when they're sleeping, running. You have to be the one that's going 20 rounds on the bag when you know they're only going 15. And that's how I pretend. Like I said, I just passed my real estate licensing exam. And while I was studying in those books, I didn't even sit in a class. I taught myself everything. I just paid for the online course and just did it all myself because I knew I had it in myself to just push myself and I would stay up hours studying, studying, and then I go take the exam, I do it, and now now the next step, like I said, I'm learning in the learning process right now, in the training process, and I'm in the office every day. As soon as I wake up, I go there and I'm, I'm building my website, I'm doing all this stuff, so when my license comes in, I'm ready to start getting on the phone to start making deals, you know what I mean? And boxing is the exact same way. I was the one that was running that extra mile, waking people up. Day after my fight, I had a really big black eye. I still get, I have scar tissue here. To this day, I remember that fight. I had a really big black eye. I fought Saturday night. I woke up Sunday morning at 9 a.m. and I went up to Mount Charleston around six miles. It was just, it, it's that push that boxing gives you and it shows you that hard work pays off. Exactly, and you take that with you the rest of your life yeah. because it's the same way in life and with your career and everything because it's like, you know, if you want to get that promotion, if you want to get a raise, if you yes. want to get a better job opportunity, you're not going to get there by doing the same thing by the guy that's sitting next to you, exactly. you know, and it's the same thing in boxing. If you want to be the same as every other boxer in, in Nevada, then do the same thing as every other boxer. If you want to get an edge on your competition, you got to be willing to do the things that everyone else isn't willing to do to set yourself yeah. apart and give you an edge. And so you can take a lot of things that you learn in boxing with you on later on in life. Yep. Help excel yourself. One thing that's really neat is that Armin and Bo will be recognized by the county commissioners of Clark County for their work with the Spring Mountain Youth Camp and the Evening Reporting Center. Through his hard work of working with the kids, of providing them opportunities, and Bo's assistance through training and encouragement Armand will receive this proclamation to highlight his career working with the at-risk youth. I think based on the success of our relationship with City Athletic Gym and the kids at Spring Mountain, they would like to take that model and promote it throughout the country. We'd like to be able to see the community get behind programs like Spring Mountain to provide kids who don't have a means to join a gym or have equipment, 
To provide them, to provide them means to be able to do that, to have a desire. They don't have to be an amateur fighter or pro fighter, but just show up at a gym, get into shape, learn about pro-social behavior and being a good citizen. That's what we can promote. And with the nonprofit part of City Athletic and what Armin is putting together, we can accomplish that. Or we get more people who are invested in the lives of troubled teens and want to do something good for a community and uh, promote their uh, ability to get into a situation like City Athletic.